Hello and welcome everybody. Today we'll be going over a lot of in-depth to prepare ourselves for the certification exam. And in this video, we'll be discussing controllers. Defining controllers. A controller is a single class that defines the request handling logic. Controllers are generally stored in app HTTP controllers directory. And as you can see, the namespace matches at the top. Out of the box, controllers in Laravel extend a base controller, which through middleware provide functions that either refuse or authorize users to access certain parts of the controller, dispatch jobs, or validate requests. Note that if you aren't using these, you don't have to bring them in. So you can simply remove extends controller here at the top and it would work all the same, just without these features. We connect to our controllers through a router. We have a few of these that come out of the box in Laravel. Generally, web routes go in routes web.php and API routes go in routes API. However, if you need to create a new router, you can always do that as well. In order to do so, you would just have to open up the app folder providers and then route service provider. Here, let's go to the boot method. This is where we define our route model bindings. Here you can see that we have the API router as well as the web router already linked up. If we wanted to, we could add another router here as well. For example, I just added this second web router here. It's fictitious, but this is essentially how you would do it. Notice that you are passing through this middleware and you're giving it this namespace. Note that if there are any conflicts in routing, the latter router will take precedence. So if you have the same route here in the second web router as the first, as this web.php, this one will take precedence. Controller namespacing. As it is relevant to our routing discussion, let's briefly talk about namespacing. A namespace is a declaration that qualifies or groups our classes, interfaces, functions, and constants. They help us to better organize our code as well as prevent name collisions. They also allow us to use aliases so that we don't always have to use the fully qualified names. Here in the router, we can see that the namespace argument is actually commented out. This is new to Laravel 8, and we'll discuss the reasons why and the pros and cons of doing this in a second. But first, let's uncomment that to see how it works. Back in the web router, instead of simply returning the welcome view here in the home page, let's put that view into our test controller, simply using the URI followed by the controller's name at the method. We'll go into exactly how routing is done in a future video. Back in the test controller, let's go ahead and add the show method. So we'll have that function, make it a public function, be called show. We don't need any parameters. We'll simply return that view, welcome view. Then let's go ahead and start up a local server so that we can go to the home page and see that it renders. And there we go. We have our simple home page. As I mentioned earlier, this is how we would have done the web router prior to Laravel 8. In the new version, let's go back to the route service provider and comment out the namespace argument as we won't be needing it. And back in the web router, Let's duplicate our route so that we can see the difference. This time, instead of passing the string as an action, we'll pass our class and method in brackets. Here, we'll import the class at the top of the file. If we comment out the first route and refresh the browser, we can see that this works. The benefit of doing it this way is that with certain IDEs like VS Code and PHP Storm, you can simply click through on the controller to view the class instead of having to search for it, which is really nice, especially if you have a lot of controllers. You can see that here, I can simply click through, whereas with just that string, the IDE does not know that this is the controller. Single action controllers. To create your own controller, it's easiest to use Lateral's artisan command, which is simply PHP artisan make controller. However, let's stop here and take a look at the help flag. Here we can learn more about the artisan command and see what the options we have. We can see that for all of our controllers, we'll need to add a name. Then we have a few options here at the bottom. We can see that for the single action controller, we'll be using the invocable flag, which we can see generates a single method invocable controller class. Let's go ahead and create one now. Here inside of that test controller, we can see what we're given. We have a simple controller with one invocable function. So imagine that we just dump a string here and die. So dd, hey there. Then if we go back into our web router, let's import that controller. And since we don't have any methods, we can simply call the controller on the route. So normally we would have that comma and then the methods. Since it is an invocable function, we don't have any other methods. We can simply call the class itself. Now let's go ahead and spin up a server and we can see our message here in the browser. That's the simplest controller that we can make. Let's make something more complex, a CRUD controller. Resource controllers. For most of your projects, you'll want controllers that do more than just one job. In fact, there's a pattern that you will likely follow, which is called CRUD or create, read, update, and delete. 
In Laravel, this pattern is reflected in the resource controller. To create a resource controller, we only need to add the resource flag to the artisan command. Inside of the controller, we can see that it comes with seven methods already lined up. We have the index, which in this example should show all of our posts. Create is where we would show the page where we want to create a post. Store is the form's endpoint that will validate and create the database entry for the post. Show shows a single post. Edit shows the page where you can edit the post. Update is the form's endpoint that will validate and update the database entry for a post. And finally, delete is the form's endpoint that will remove a post database entry. Then in the web router, we can create routes to all of these methods simply by using the resource method. And don't forget to import the controller at the top. Then to help us visualize all of these routes, we can use the artisan command php artisan route list. Alternatively, we can simply use r colon l and this will show us all of our routes. You can see here that we have all seven of the post controller methods without having to write them out individually. Had we wanted to write them all out, it would look something like this. But let's take a closer look here. So we can see that we are using four HTTP verbs, get, post, put, and delete. We will use the get verb for all of the pages that we want to see in the browser, such as the index, each individual post, as well as the create and update pages. Then post, delete, and put are only used either in an API or as the endpoint in a form. Here, post creates the post, put updates the post, and delete will remove that post. We can also see that I am setting the named attribute at the end. If you write them all out, you can name these whatever you would like. But following this pattern is probably the best idea. Finally, let's take a look at this post parameter. By default, this will be the post ID from the table. While this may work for some people, the number itself isn't very SEO friendly. Instead, imagine that we are creating a slug of the title and saving that in the slug column. Then we can simply use the function get route key name within the model to use the slug instead of the ID. Note that the name of the route parameter must match up perfectly with the type hinted variable name. So in the router, we have the name post. Then if we go into the show method, we can type in post, give it the variable name post, and then simply we can return that post. And so the post here, it will be taken from wherever the slug has that name and then it will return the full database object from that post. Going back to our web router, imagine that instead of writing out all of the methods individually, we wanted to use the resource controller. However, we don't want to use all of the methods. Luckily, we can use the only or accept methods for that. If we wanted to only use the index or show methods, we could use something like this, where we have only, and we pass in an array of the two methods that we want to use. Alternatively, if we wanted to use everything except the destroy and update methods, we could also use except. So notice how we have except here. We pass an array of the methods that we don't want to use. Another thing that you may want to change is the verb structure within the URLs. Imagine that your entire website is in Spanish, but you have the URL with, for example, instead of post, maybe we say comentario, and then we have this word create. So create or the English language versions are by default, but this may look suboptimal to have it in a mixture of Spanish and English. So what we could do is simply go back to the route service provider and include the resource verbs. And instead of create, for example, we could use crear, or instead of edit, we could use editar. Having saved that, let's go ahead and take a look at the route again. And we can see here that I, for example, I'm using posts, and then we have crear, and edit that. But it doesn't change anything else. The create method is still there and the edit method is still there. So the only thing that's changed is the URI, API controllers. I often use a JavaScript framework such as Vue on the front end and Laravel on the back end. A JavaScript framework can really make the front end a lot smoother by eliminating page reloads on form submissions. However, in order to make this work, we really don't need the whole resource controller. Instead, we can take advantage of Laravel's API controller. We can create this controller with the following command, php artisan make controller. Then we have the API, the forward slash, the name of the controller, and then we have that API flag. You may want to notice two things here. First is that we're prefixing the controller's name with API. This will place it in within the API folder, which is within app HTTP controllers API. And the second is the API flag. Let's actually dive a little bit deeper here into what actually happens. By calling PHP artisan make controller, we're calling one of Laravel's built-in artisan commands, which can be found in vendor, Laravel framework source, illuminate routing, console, 
then controller make command. Here we can see what's actually going on. If we scroll down to get stub, we can see that these flags that we're adding, whether it be the parent, model, invocable, resource, or API, will select a pre-built stub for us among other things such as if we have model it'll create the model as well let's go ahead and take a look at the api stub which can be found in the stubs folder now it's nice to see how it's all being built behind the scenes but it wouldn't really change anything in here directly the vendor folder is being ignored by git so any changes won't be reflected in your repository and if you update the framework then any of these changes will be lost as well instead you can simply publish these stubs with the following command php artisan stub publish here the stubs are copied and placed within the stubs folder in the main application. Any modifications or new stubs you should really be kept here. Going back to the API controller, as we can see in this stub, it is simply limited to the index, store, show, update, and destroy method. To connect to our API controller, we should use the API router, which is found in routes api.php, and we can connect to our post controller pretty much the same way as we did it in the web router, but notice that we'll have the API resource right here instead, and don't forget to import Import that controller here at the top. And finally, wanted to mention if you have multiple API controllers, you can put them into a single array within the API resources. Middleware. Middleware is used as a way to filter HTTP requests entering our application. For example, does the user have permission to see a certain page? If so, we will allow them to see it. Otherwise, we will perhaps redirect to the home page or a login page. If we go to app HTTP kernel, we can see that we have three groups of middleware. The first is middleware that will be run for every request in our application. The second group is the route middleware group, which are added to the web and API routers respectively. If we go to the route service provider, we can see that they were added in here. Then back in the kernel, if we go a bit further down, we can see the route middleware array. We can attach these middleware to our routes and group of routes. There are three main ways that we can attach middleware to our routes. First, we can simply add the middleware uh, along with the name of the middleware to the end of the route. Then if we have a group of routes that all use the same middleware, we can simply add it to the group. We can also add it inside of the controller's constructor and it will be applied to each of the methods within that controller. Now you may be wondering how you can create your own middleware and use that. Well, luckily there is a helpful artisan command just for that. Note that it only accepts one argument, which is the name. So here we will create a middleware to only allow certain users to see certain parts of the website. And we can see our middleware has been created inside of the middleware folder within HTTP. We will simply place our logic here within the handle method. And what we'll do is get the authenticated user. So if there is a user, so if somebody's logged in, imagine if we have a super user column within the database and this is true, imagine if it's a Boolean. If it is one, then this will pass. It will return to the next request. Otherwise, let's return redirect. Uh, maybe we'll just send them to the home page. We can send them to the login page however you want to handle it. But yeah, here is where the logic would go. And then we will have to register our middleware with, within the app HTTP kernel right here at the bottom. See here, we are going to alias it as super user and it will use the allow super user middleware. Then imagine we're back here into the web router. If we wanted to use it, we would just use it as we have been using auth. So here we could just say super user and that would use that middleware. Dependency injection. As we discussed in an earlier video, dependency injection is when class dependencies are injected into the class, typically via a constructor. Once this is done, the injected class will then be available for use in the rest of the controller. Dependency injection with a constructor will look something like this, where we import the class at the top, declare the arguments inside the class, and type hint the arguments in the constructor, and then attach it to the class. You can also type hint dependencies in the methods themselves. And you'll see here often we type hint the request and then use it here in the method. Route caching. To speed up our application, we can cache the routes. Then when the application is loaded, the entire route map will be instantaneously loaded as well, instead of having to be taken from the router itself. In order to cache our routes, we can use the artisan command php artisan route cache. Once this has been called, you can see the cache within bootstrap cache routes v7.php. Here you can see everything is in a few arrays. There is one downside though. Note that as long as this file exists, 
any updates to your routers won't be reflected in the application until you update the cache. To update your cache, you can simply call the route cache command again, and then to clear it, you can call route clear. You can see here that our cache is no longer available. So that's Laravel's controllers in a nutshell. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to write in the comments section below. And if you're planning on taking the certification exam, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. All right, thanks everybody, take care.